Yo, Shortbox Nation, this is Botter, and I'm here to tell you right now that con season starts early this year with the return of Northeast Florida's premier anime, comic book, and sci-fi event, Collective Con. That's right, Northeast Florida's largest pop culture convention returns for its 10th year on March 8th through the 10th at the Prime Osborne Center in Jacksonville, Florida. 10 years of Collective Con, they're pulling all the stops out to make sure this is a can't-miss event. And the guest list they got going, don't even get me started on the guest list. I mean, they've got A-list celebrity guests and voice actors from some of your favorite movies, anime, and video games like Elijah Wood and Sean Ashton, Ray Park, Trisha Helfer, Ross Marquin, Max Middleman, and bo herself would be there, Katie Sackhoff. Tell me what other convention is giving you the opportunity to meet Frodo and Sam from Lord of the Rings, Darth Maul, and One Punch Man all under the same roof. Only at Collective Con. And if you're looking to get some of your favorite comics signed, or if you want to get an original sketch from some of the best comic artists in the world, well, you're in luck because there'll be plenty of comic and creator guests there, like DC comic artist extraordinaire Clay Mann, Harvey Award nominated illustrator John Taylor Christopher, Marvel and DC cover artist Chris Stevens, and acclaimed Star Wars author Timothy Zahn. They'll all be at Collective Con this year. And if you're looking to bring the family or if you want to make a weekend out of it, you're in luck because there'll be so much going on at CollectiveCon that weekend in the form of vendors, fan panels, video game tournaments, cosplay contests, after parties, and a bunch of fan events. You can purchase single and three-day weekend passes now using the link in this episode's show notes or by going to CollectiveCon.com to book your tickets and hotel. Buy your tickets now and I'll see you at CollectiveCon, March 8th through the 10th. Now let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen. I present to you the Short Box Podcast. The Short Box Podcast is recorded live from Jacksonville, Florida. Did you see the picnic basket in this previous? I did not. No. Oh. No, wait, wait. I, I think I did. Was that the end? I think I did, yeah. Hold it's like up. the Ikea of, like, nerdism. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's like see. bed sheets. So I'm going to title this Previews. Previews feels like a Target. You're spending a lot of money. <laughs> Bro. It, You're not and coming you, out and, like less than 40. You, <laughs> that, is, that is a good point, yeah. If you can look through Previews and spend less than 40, Bro, more power to you. It actually costs you money to look through Previews. <laughs> You're like, damn, it's pretty pricey. Can we admit that the SBX, we were really thinking about, like, how much it looks like sex? Or were we? <laughs> <laughs> or were we? Hey. Damn, it's getting hot in here already, dude. Short Shit. Box Nation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, Sex Box. Wow, Sex, sex Box, box Nation. Nation. <laughs> well, I guess that's the title of the show. Sex Box Nation. It has nothing to do with nothing this topic with at sex. Head. Yo, clickbait, thank you for joining us on Sex Talk Nation. <laughs> I know you're here expecting sex talk, but we're going to talk about comic books, <laughs> the opposite spectrum, all right? One is definitely not going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I'm trying to remember the, uh, uh, it, it's, provo- there you go. it's provocative, it gets people going. Go on. Let's go ahead and get uh let's go ahead and get to the main event. And let's go ahead and address the, the listeners, right? I want to go ahead and welcome the short box nation and the patrons as well, because they're definitely gonna get this video version. They'll get this episode first and foremost before anyone else. So I want to welcome the patrons. I want to welcome the short box nation for a very special bonus episode, a little casual episode. I got my right hand man, Andrew Torres, here with me. It's been a minute, so I'm gonna give you the round of applause, Drew. Thanks, guys. What up, buddy? I didn't know what you loaded that thing up with. <laughs> Fart sound. Yeah, yeah, some stupid. Just shit. me saying some outlandish shit that you just sampled. <laughs> <laughs> but you edited it so well. I'm just like, wow, well, I can't really deny that. He <laughs> added horns. I put. I remember distinctly there was horns. I think I have enough incriminating uh, sound bites for you that I could load up everything. <laughs> oh hell yeah, that would be hilarious. Well, I mean, my favorite one is still. This is amazing. It's a, it's a favorite. It's a favorite. Or, I like it's a oh great... my god. That don't even sound like you anyway. No. That does not sound like Thank you. Thank you. You've become a grown man. All right. So, listeners, uh, today, like I said, it's going to be a casual, relaxed episode. Uh, me and Drew wanted to hop on the mics because, dude, I, I just can't get away from recording, right? I, I generally like recording, and even though I wanted to take two weeks off, I figured why not hop on the mics. It's been a minute since you've been on the mic as well. You've been kind of confined to uh, uh, Patreon exclusives uh, because, as you like to say, you got to pay 
you got to pay for this type of content, right? You want Drew on board? You want to hear Drew? You got to pay. Very true. But we wanted to do something special. And this episode is just primarily going to be a focus on us flipping through the previews catalog, right? For those of you unfamiliar, the previews catalog, it is a phone book size uh, catalog that features all the upcoming comics, manga, graphic novels, toys, games, Money. apparel. <laughs> it is essentially a giant wish list for nerdy you guys adults. remember when like black you remember like picture time when you're young and black friday was coming and that big ass toys r us phone book of toys came out and you got to peep all the toys that were coming out you, you just be like oh man this is crazy that's how it is <laughs> every month for grown people yeah. to look through a catalog yeah. It's a bill in itself. You know, you get charged just for looking through the previous catalog. But it shows you everything that's coming to your local comic shop. It's in one convenient place is what I like that it's, you know, a monthly. You can either get a physical uh, catalog or uh, what I just learned kind of recently, you can also get a digital version of the catalog uh, book. So uh, as I was saying, each month's catalog contains hundreds and hundreds of pages of upcoming comics, toys, apparel, related merchandise, etc., uh, they come out monthly, so if you visit your local comic shops on a frequent basis, you've probably seen these massive books tucked away somewhere in the corner. You're blocking the, the view front. of something, and you're like, yeah, what is this big book? Get out of my way. I want to look for all this other stuff. Dude, I like Ed Gotham. He's got them in that cabinet down by the floor. Can you imagine, like, newspaper boys carrying that stuff? <laughs> and throwing them. Throwing them. Extra previews, previews. <laughs> Read all about it. And Spend your money it, as fast as it comes. Bro, when he throws it to your door, it dents the door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Honey, are we in the attack? No, the preview. <laughs> but here's the you're excited as shit. Like you're just happy. It's like woo, right? It is. Like- I wish they had a call in number too. I wish I could call them and be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> me again. Yo, you with like the your, your shoulder holding the phone, uh, and for some reason you got a wired phone, so you're like you're twisting the cord <laughs> as you're flipping through. As you would have like, to. <laughs> all right, and then on page 85, there is a Thor statue that I want. Put me down for two. You know, put me down for two. Put me down for two. <laughs> <laughs> There's a variant for that one? Bro. Ooh. And you got rollers in your hair for some reason. You're also doing your hair. <laughs> and I guess we should also shout out that technically this episode is brought to you by Got- our sponsor, Gotham City Limit, the best comic shop here in Jacksonville, Florida. Bro, I guarantee you, if you go into Gotham City, you're having a bad day. You just go in there. Just let Ben like just make you laugh. <laughs> exactly. And he's always encouraging his customers to pick up. Pre- I mean, it's kind of behooves him to do so, right? But he's always encouraging people to, to get a preview. So for the most part, he might even give it to you free or for a discount if you buy enough books. The timing on the previews always confuses me, the schedule, right? Like it came out this month in September, yeah. but the solicitation on the website at previewsworld.com. Uh, it's like two years from now. But on the website, they, it, the solicitation reads, This November issue features items scheduled to ship in January 2023 and beyond. That is still something I need to kind of like wrap my head around. I'm going to ask. Um, that we're in the year 2023? Already. Or the, the word beyond. No, it's Anything just like. that's beyond. It's like just... it came out in September, but they're calling it the November issue for things in January. And and I'm sure I've probably got that right, but. Oh, it's like your, your mother's cousin's sister's <laughs> twice removed. All right, yeah, I get it. All right, cool. So the goal was to look through this month's previews and highlight a few things that we are excited for. So these could be like new comic book series coming out. Picnic uh, baskets. Toy picnic baskets as we said. Waffle found, makers. Uh, manga and all of that. Smut. So we comics. had hundreds. What was that last one? <laughs> Smut. <laughs> it comics. was comics for the record. <laughs> yeah. But this was our chance to kind of just get hype over some stuff that, you know, wishful thinking. You know, maybe we'll buy these. Maybe we won't. Mm-hmm. If you are tuning in audio wise, I do encourage you to check out the video because, you know, we've got some uh, visual references. We've actually got some of the pages uh, pulled up with the uh, items. So with that being said, I encourage you to join along on our YouTube channel. And uh, enough talking, man. Let's go ahead and get this thing going. Drew, I'm going to start off with you, man. I want you to kick us off. <laughs> about this thing that as, yeah, as you inhale an M&M. Um, you know, this M&M bag is out of the uh, frame. But I want people to know, it's family size. My man is over here, pound town, giving pound town to a family size bag. You're lucky I'm not sticking these in my in my little overall <laughs> pocket over here. Like, Every time yo. I look away, <laughs> damn, Drew, you're really making a dent in this. All right, how about? Uh, so you sent me three pages of I uh, with stuff that yeah, you, you like. told me to send five, but I was like, I didn't want to get greedy, so I signed in three, and I was kind of hoping that me and you did some overlaps. Pulling up your first image, and okay. it is a tell us tell us what we're seeing. Okay, so right now we are seeing the hardcore, the hardcore version, the hardcover <laughs> version. Yeah, these are hardcore adult only Mega Man. You've never seen Mega Man look like this. He's a fucking robot. It says Mega Man Zero X. <laughs> oh my god! 
Welcome to the sex box. We're going to be talking oh, about Mega box. Man X. Damn, you guys know Mega Man X is where he has a little bit more armor. His blaster's bigger. Very phallic, dude. All right, oh, I'm sorry. Tell me what we're looking at. Okay, so um, if anybody's ever been to a con in the last, like, 20 years, anytime you walk around, you'll see these books everywhere. Oh, yeah. They're, like, overly priced. They're $100. When they first came out, they were soft cover. It's from Udon. Udon, Udon has a bunch of, like, just really good art books. Art books in general is just one of those things that, are like, coming into age, like, that's the one book that we keep on the most. Like, I'll sell my comic books, but I'll keep all my art books. Oh, for sure. You know why? Because even though now I feel like Udon Entertainment has done a really good job of re-releasing. reprinting those, yeah. And I feel like every month they're reprinting these Mega Man ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mega Man official complete works. You got the Mega Man Zero official complete works. Mm-hmm. Battle Network. And, I mean, there was a time where me and you were looking for these, and these things were oh, like $160. On. And then I, any of those Udon books were like $300 if they were Street Fighter related. Exactly. Actually, I was in my storage unit the other day, and I have a Yeah, bin. where's that storage unit? <laughs> Is <laughs> that your mom's house, B? Yeah. You know, I won't lie. Every time I go to my storage unit, I always do a double back. I always act like I'm a spy meeting up with another spy to do a transaction because I'm so worried about people. Lock like, the door. Yeah. Put a match on top of the lock to make sure nobody's been jiggling. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Fuck you guys, man. I actually was flipping through all the Udon official like Street Fighter art books I have. And They're beautiful. They are. They're great, but I, I, I was reminded how a few of them I spent like a good bit of money. Because they, they sold out, and they were sold out for so long. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, eventually, matter of fact, if we're looking at your page right now, there's a big old fucking sign that says, Offered Again. These Mega Man books are always are selling out. So so you would, um of these four, Mega Man, Mega Man Zero, Battle Network, and the Star Force art book, which one, like, do you not own? Do you own any of these? No, I do not own any of those. I've oh, just, these are hardcover, too. I've flipped, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, They've wow. only been softcover. Soft your brother has two of these. He does. I'm not gonna lie. And I the, probably uh, next time I go to the house, I might rescue them. That's oh the phrase. God. I use. Rescue them. <laughs> Look you at this given, They're you all ever bent. given your brother something that like you want? Like you're like I I I also want this, but I'm going to gift it to you. Mm-hmm. And then you see the way they treat it, and you're mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna rescue that from them. <laughs> like I'm doing it a favor. I'm doing you a favor because one day you'll thank me. I one time gifted my brother a video game that I was so excited. I was like, you know. What? This is great. This is like an inside yeah, joke between me aside. and him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, like this is something. Anytime I come over, me and him can play this game. A year later, hey man, where's the game? Oh man, I traded that for another game. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I wanted to play this game. So I mean, GameStop was offering. GameStop <laughs> <laughs> was offering three twenty for this one. <laughs> <laughs> what? I spent thirty dollars. No, I would have given you the three dollars and twenty cents. You would have asked, man. <laughs> You could have just texted me and I said, hey, GameStop is offering me all this. <laughs> you almost want to be like, I will give you triple what GameStop <laughs> is giving you, you know? Just to keep you off the streets from selling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do I own these? Yeah. No. Uh, your brother has brother two does. of them. He has the, the the network and the zero. I just remember flipping I those know real and they're quick, dope. I want to know real quick why you know so much about what my brother has. Because me and him, like, he, he's a big no, Mega Man fan. Yo, he's the real Mega Man fan. Well, it's because I bought these for him. Okay. I think I bought him the, the Mega Man, and I definitely bought him the Zero, because mm-hmm. he was really into And Mega look, Man if Man. you look, the Mega Man X is not on there. Everything else is on there, but not the Mega Man X. I mean, the Zero's up there. The Star Force, even... Um, that one looks pretty sick. That's that like an like, art germ cover, doesn't it? It does. Let me zoom in. You. Ooh, yeah, that looked like art. I suck at zooming in on the iMac. But yeah. And that's um, and that's the official complete works. That Battle Network is dope. I, I think it goes through all their games too. Oh, and dude, th- that was like to me, Pokemon's very iconic. But when Mega Man Battle Network came out, to me that was another part of my life where I'm like, oh, this is like this isn't the Mega Man you grew up on. <laughs> <laughs> this is Pokemon Mega Man. Well said. And they're not too badly priced. Nah. Like- and hard covers that they'll probably yeah forty five dollars. The one I would get the most is probably that zero. And honestly, the Star Force now looking at it because I know nothing about it, and there would be just some dope character designs. That's good stuff. All right, let's look at your number two item. So Mega Man Official Complete Works was number one. Number two is I'm assuming it's this the boxer. The boxer, yeah. Okay, okay. Tell me a little bit about about this one. No, I was just honestly I don't know why, but I was just looking for anything that was like a number one or volume ones because I just didn't want to be like, well, oh, I like number three. Have you read it? No, this just looked cool. I know nothing about it. It just looks really cool. It just says the boxer. And it deals with a dude that's boxing. So this guy that's just basically like, <laughs> I don't know, like I'm, I'm a sucker for boxing movies, boxing TV shows, boxing animes. So anything that's like boxing related, I'll, I'll give a shot. 
Is it just titled The Boxer or is it actually about boxing? No, it is about boxing. It's like um, this kid that has like this raw power and then he has this coach that teaches him how to like use it. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, like a little sensei, like, you know, this guy's raw power. So Taking the young prodigy under his wing, the two shock the world of boxing fight by fight as Coach K. Bro, you know, if if a coach is just by one letter, you mm-hmm. know he's a damn good coach. Yeah. Coach K attempts to make you the greatest of all time. But what exactly compels you to keep entering the ring? Nice. So, yeah. Me and you have talked a lot this month about uh, manga, because that is kind of where my focus is lately, just trying out new manga. I feel like I've tried out. Do you feel like it's seasonal? Oh, because the fall is coming? Mm-hmm. And I just want something like... You know what? I, I think a little bit set of the, I, I'll tell you right now. There, it, there's, you know, there are so many like <laughs> factors that basically influence the things that you want to read and get into. And I honestly think that, like, be- when it gets cooler in the cooler months, and like the everything starts to changing, something about manga to me like really just encompasses like all that because they draw nature in yeah. such a way that you're like, oh, okay, this is dope. And I think something too about the black and white artwork to it too kind of is like it gives you it gives a certain mood, right? It's not like warm, sunny, but it's like more kind of you got to use your own imagination. <laughs> Sure. All right. So the boxer volume one by simply an artist, just J H. Yeah. J H. J H. I have no idea who that is. We'll see. All right. So, uh, this comes out, does it have a date? Well, I'm assuming it'd be, you know, November, right, November, uh, January, yeah. 2025 yeah, or something yeah. like that. Nah. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool. 25. I like that. <laughs> and I like the price too. For 20 bucks, you get uh 232 pages volume one. And I think my litmus test lately has been, if I like the first volume of a manga, then I mean, obviously, I'm going to continue going, but volume one is is like is enough story, right? It's it's way more pages than, say, like a 22 page comic book, because I feel like with, with trying out a new comic series, sometimes the first issue isn't always like the best litmus test. Sometimes I like to give it like two to three issues. Mm-hmm. But with manga, volume one to me is enough. I mean, and look that's at this. chapters. It, yeah. And that's chapters. You're getting like five or six chapters. Exactly. In this case, you're getting 232 pages of story. Yeah, I don't even know how many chapters that is. And you don't have to worry about, for the most part, you don't have to worry about ads or any filler. Um, I don't like think tie in comics. I don't have to buy 17 different covers. They just make one cover. Yeah. So this was a good Boom. pick. Let me see. Thanks, All right. man. So what else you got? All right. So your last but not least. So that was the boxer. You, we already did Mega Man. Boom. Uh, this one you There's went into Marvel. the Marvel previews. All right. So this is on page, I think, 70. And we're looking at Ultraman, the mystery of Ultra 7, number four of five. Mm-hmm. Uh, but have you read uh, the, the first? I read the first volume of Ultraman mm. with of Kyle Marvel's Higgins Ultraman. of Marvel's Ultraman. The covers look awesome. Yeah, well, the, there's technically, I think this is probably the third volume. So I read the first volume. The second volume, I have it queued up in my library. Mm. Um, I love the first volume. I thought it was really good. Kyle, like Kyle Higgins is uh, really doing such a good job with, how would you even was it sent? How do you even want to say it? How do you say um, the genre of what he's doing? Oh, Power Rangers, like Sentai, is Sentai, yeah, yeah. So, Power Rangers, Black Radiant, same thing. He's fighting monsters, so I think that's really, really cool. Like, I mean, like, he's Kyle Higgins is a good writer, and I think he found his wheelhouse of like, you know, how um, Donny Case everybody talks about how he writes about weapons and how, like how mm-hmm. epic it is. Kyle Higgins is just doing doing a really good job of like mi- mixing like you know fighting with monsters and yeah. like epic like it's almost like once he got that fame from his Power Rangers run mm-hmm. and then he basically took that idea and, and made it into an indie comic book of Radiant Black. Um, so I get, like I see why it makes sense. Like the next his Marvel stuff is like Ultraman, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's still in that kind of Japanese um, uh, pop culture. He, yeah, he pays homage, and it, it's it's really well written. Have you read any of the first volume? The, I just I remember the covers being very, very sick. It's like Art Adams, yeah, Alex I, Ross. I know it was received pretty well when the news got out that um, that Marvel got the license for Ultraman. Like people like, I think, like Corey Torgerson, you know, a friend of the show, was like really interested in, in Marvel's interpretation of it. So I've only heard good things, and if you're telling me that this is – so when when you say like the third volume, it sounds like volume one and two were both just like mini series, like yeah. five issues. Okay, five issue mini series. Cool. So I forget what the first one called. The first one could be just called Ultraman. The second volume, I believe it's Ultraman Trial of Ultraman. Let me see. I'm gonna pull this. And up that's here. the volume two that like I'm working on too. That Alex Ross cover. Yeah, pull up some of these over. covers. Yeah, and that's volume. Yeah, our Adam. No, the Art Adam covers are 
Awesome. Dude, and the interior artwork is really, really fun. It reminds me of like a Stuart Amon meets Jorge Jimenez. Yo, this is Botter. Sorry for interrupting this episode, but I'll keep it brief. I wanted to let you know about a massive sale we have going on over at the Short Box Store on all of our merchandise and apparel. That's the shortboxstore.bigcartel.com. You can now save 20% off your entire order using the discount code YO, Y-O-O. So if you've been waiting for the right time to finally buy that gauntlet snapback, or if you ever wanted to buy any of the shirts you see me wear on the podcast, well, now's your chance to get them for a steal. We still have a few sizes left of everything, but they won't last long and once they're gone they are gone and then i mentioned that all of our apparel is screen printed on high quality material none of that heat transfer or direct to garment stuff our shirts are some of the most comfortable ones you'll ever wear and the hats look even better in person so wear your support for the short box nation proudly knowing that you're going to look damn good doing it get to the shortboxstore.bigcartel.com as soon as you can and don't forget to use that discount code Yo, Y-O-O, to save 20% off your entire order. All of this information can be found in this episode's show notes if you want to get there faster. Thanks for not pressing fast forward. Now back to the show. And I'm assuming, so I guess how much of like Ultraman do you know about? Like, uh, did you know about, did you follow Ultraman or watch any of the, Bro, the, the shows? this all stemmed when we watched, when you had told me about that, uh, Spider Man documentary about like how oh, the Japanese Spider Man, the Japanese Spider Man, how he inspired uh, Power Rangers. But the fact that this guy exists, like this guy has a whole history on its own. Like he's very iconic. I've kind of like not dived deep into this, but I've kind of dipped my pinky toe in there, in the sense of like I Netflix has like this animated show that I watched the first episode on, and then I and I watched and I read the first volume of of this. And I think that's what the goal of this series is, right? Like to introduce maybe i guess reintroduce at this point because ultraman has been around so long but reintroduce the ultraman lore and fandom to american audiences Mm -hmm. that's cool that kyle higgins is like staying on this too that he's getting like the creative freedom to continue doing this this cover looks rad too good stuff you got anything else to say about your picks oh they're just a whole theme of just like anime yeah you're gonna be anime, Um, anime manga heavy was this previews getting you jazzed about reading comic books like are you this is like if this opens this preview kind of gives you a like if you're far removed and not far removed it's just like hey listen i'm gonna go take a break i'm gonna read at my leisure you come back in the previews it's like it's the world of multiverse it's the multiverse of 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 comic books and you're like all right what's good it is what's quite, happening i think it can be a lot at first because like you know if, if you're used to reading the physical book it is a massive I, like i always say it's a phone book size catalog but it is a phone book size catalog and a lot like this, this Ultraman being a prime example, it shows you four or five, right? So you're like, oh, damn, I wonder what the, you know, I'm, they're already soliciting the fourth issue of this series. So sometimes you can be lost. But to your point, if you're not, if you've been out of comic books for a while, or you're not too sure what's going on, I think previews is a good, um, good like recap. But yeah, lately I have really been, I've just been picking up previews. And to your point, it's because I know I can't read everything, but I would like to be aware of what's coming out. And there's something about just flipping through this massive book of just like stuff, right? Like yeah. you don't really continuity. You don't get bored. Like you really don't get bored flipping through it because there's just so much to go through. And I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I like this digital aspect. I think I might just start getting them digital because after you finish a previews, there's really no you know rereadability. Say, Break your screen real quick and tell me how much you like digital. <laughs> just tell me right now, like whatever you're reading on, just throw it on the ground and then tell me how you like. But my it. issue with previews early on was that oh, I see what you did there. Uh-huh. They're so big, it takes up. So you're like, how do I get rid of this? Do I recycle it? Like you really have to go to your recycling bin and throw that Wait, shit. Are out. we talking about previews or the sex box? <laughs> <laughs> previews. Previews, <laughs> okay, previews. Okay, okay, previews. okay. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed flipping through this previews. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out. I think this one didn't have nearly as many new number ones as I as I wanted to see. Because, you know, some previews is like, this one has all the new number ones coming out. But I think because we're getting towards the end of the year, a lot of things are wrapping up. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to go ahead and share. I'm excited to see all the stuff that you pick because I'm going to talk shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, judging from our pre-production talk, it sounds like a lot of things I'm going to share, you've already seen. Yeah. I'm going to start off with this one first uh, to kind of continue on this manga. Dang, anime kind of I'm so excited. Here's the thing. I saw that. And I was like, you know, what? yeah, this is badass. My first pick is this Adam 
the beginning manga. So in the previews, uh, the page that I got pulled up, they're soliciting issue th- or volume three already, but I've already got volume one pre-ordered already. It comes out in October. Volume two comes out at the end of the year and then volume three at the top of the year. But it's supposed to be like this prequel slash standalone story to Astro Boy, like the original Astro Boy story by, um, and they, in the solicitations, they call him, you know, of course, the manga god, the manga godfather, Osama Tezuka. And they even credit Osama Tezuka as part of the, um, you know, original story, um, alongside, I guess, the actual uh, person that did the script for this, Adam, the beginning, Mas- Masami uh, Yuki, with art by Tetsuro Ka- uh, Kasahara. Um, but just judging from the preview pages that are, is available here on and on like Amazon, I'm for it, man. It's I love be- how they break panels. I love I love manga how they do their panels. So manga panels to me are like, whoa, why'd you do it that way? So it's supposed to follow, I believe, Dr. Light and um Dr. Uh Robot not Robotnik. Now I'm thinking Yeah, oh. Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> And Sonic. You took Sonic and Mega Man. I know, Man. I know. I combined hey, yeah. them. But they are kind of like, you know, homages to each other. What but if Mega to... Man and Sonic? Okay, go ahead. So this manga series is supposed to be a, a prequel story that uh, that I think for the most part follows Dr. Tenma's origin as an engineering student. Um, you know, I mean, solicitation says it all, but a sci-fi manga about the turbulent lives of two robotics engineering students, which I'm assuming one of them being Dr. Tenma, and their latest revolutionary project the unassuming yet insanely strong A106 or 6. Um, so I think it kind of just follows like maybe like the proto Astro Boy kind of series. But I mean, it's it's being solicited as perfect for fans of Battle Angel Alita and Ghost in the Shell. Okay. Um, you know, they're giving credit to Osama Tezuka. Dude, I'm here for this, man. This looks like a manga right up my alley. Mm-hmm. And as someone that has recently read, you know, like in the last five years, read Pluto, thanks to you, I'm here for all of this like Astro Boy homage. It's always fun because you get to delve into the whole like psychology aspect and and what it is to be like alive. The only, thing I'm, the only thing I'm missing is actually reading more Astro Boy. I did try to read like volume one. Astro it's a hard Boy. read. It's hard. It's like reading those like old DC like 1927s. Yeah. You're like, oh, I know this is going to be good, but like, ugh. yeah, you're you're like, if I read this younger or earlier or when the time was out, I can understand the full impact. But I've already been accustomed to seeing like mechs and 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 anime and manga at this time um i've really got to like look at it from my eye but i've been enjoying all this astro boy um learning th- about astro boy through these homage kind of mangas yeah that's what's really cool about it they do it's such people are such big fan of astro boy that it's more modern too right like like pluto is an homage to astro boy but it was you know it's it's a recent kind of modern it's a murder uh, mystery exactly kind of so, and it feels like a true detective yeah so Adam, the beginning was my first pick. That's got me hype. Um, that is in the previous catalog. My next one is the next one that caught my eye in the previous catalog is coming out through Frank Miller presents, and it's Frank Miller's Ronin Book Part Two. He's got Philip Tan and another artist, uh, Daniel Henriquez. Uh, I'm not familiar with him, mm-hmm. but Philip Tan was enough to get my interest. Um, you know, to pique my interest. You got Frank Miller revisiting. Ronin and doing a book too for you know this new um publishing uh company that he's got going on. Tell me that these covers do not in- they look, like they look interest. amazing. They look I don't fantastic. I don't know if this second one right here in the lower right hand corner is I think that is Philip Tan because I see his signature, but just from the artwork alone and it being black and white too, I would probably pick this up just for the artwork. Mm-hmm. It definitely so, looks like one of those like yeah I. It looks gorgeous and they're and they're um. And it looks like it's going to be a prestige format, fifty six pages, black and white. At that, seven ninety nine, not bad. I'd, I'd pay that for a prestige format. Yeah, hopefully it can stick the landing. Hopefully it's good. Good point. Have you ever read Ronan? No. I was on my uh, Lone Wolf and Cub kick for like the past six months, and I still wanted to continue reading more like kind of samurai stuff. And I was really tempted to give Frank Miller's Ronan a shot mm-hmm. because you know Frank Miller did. All, basically, a, a good majority of the first uh, um, couple of Lone Wolf and Cub covers. So maybe I might revisit it, or I might just honestly just jump in here. And see what's what. See if you're able to like understand mm. everything. I mean, it could yeah. be. So this is supposed to come out, I guess, same thing. Is, <laughs> like that, a Jim Lee? is that Jim Lee? That's Bro, Jim that's Lee. what I'm saying. It looks... No, it's to the left. Is that Jim Lee? No, that's Philip Tan, dude. I can tell by by the eyes. Really? Philip Tan, okay, like, from, a, from a distance? I was like, holy no. crap, okay. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. This this cover on the right hand side looks just like Jim. I Lee. think that's the variant where it's like that's the Frank Miller cover, but it's Philip Tan and Frank Miller. Uh, that's just Philip Tan. Okay, that's a good point. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks, looks good. good. So I'm excited for that. I'm gonna do one more comic book. So this is the other one I got. <laughs> I did five, so you know you got to bear with this it. Just, this is Doctor this Strange. Is the most natural. Like, yeah, you know, where do you go from there? You do this. Yeah, and we're hyping up right now. Doctor Strange, Fall Sunrise. It is going to be written and drawn by Trad Moore. America's sweetheart. <laughs> Marvel's sweetheart. I've never heard anything bad from him, right? So he's doing his take on Doctor Strange, and in the Marvel previews is where they've got the solicitation. Um, I think they're showing both the front and back page. This mm-hmm. might be like a wraparound cover, but Drew, when I looked at this, I had to make sure that I wasn't on shrooms or acid. <laughs> I was like, yo, this looks trippy, like, dude. Hey, what did you put in my coffee? <laughs> This looks so trippy. As it should be. Are you excited for this? Heck yeah. I didn't even say the F word because I'm so excited. <laughs> so much I respect Tradmore because you can't curse him for Tradmore. Not at all. He's American Sweetheart. He is you. American Sweetheart. I mean, if I feel like if this, just this little preview, just this, this cover is going to be a taste of what we get, I think it's going to be worth it just for, I feel like Tradmore is, is, is always going to be worth it, especially if you are a fan of like, just comic book I, art. I guarantee you. And just you, pushing the envelope. I feel like Trad Moore, like, honestly, like, we'll say, like, 20, maybe 20 or 30 years from now, because, like, I mean, his stuff is great now. I, it's like, I feel like 30 years from now, it's going to be one of those, like, oh, my God, like, this dude, like, the way he draws is just amazing. Like, you know what else I like? Everything is gorgeous. You know what else I think is going to help with that lore or, or that is that he's really good at picking... Pro, like he isn't like oversaturated like there isn't a lot of trad more you can go to like say luther strode you know ran for three volumes that, that's a lot of trad more but it's good and then you get the other one that he did with the, um alex not he did the other one with i think it's alex not or alex not a l e s k o t it's the one where um everything is on camera oh yeah and yeah, him yeah. and that girl are right. um like trying to run and like disrupt that was um, an image series right mm-hmm. okay yep 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 so that's what i'm saying it's like i think he picks really good projects and he looks like someone that only does because I, I i imagine his work takes so long like mm-hmm. his work is so detailed he fills every like there's never any negative it's space all geometrical like, it's like yo, yeah. you, you put a lot of thought into your panels you're so, probably like drawing redrawing i'm pretty sure like he does stuff it doesn't like it and just starts new man i can only imagine what his like scrap projects look like but he's definitely someone that i anytime that he's got a project coming out i think he peaks my interest like your ears perk up because you're like you know how much work goes how much work goes into his his artwork and you're like oh if he's doing a project then it's one that he's he's gonna invest just like in. if tried more covers and you'll just be like wow this guy is just amazing yeah he's pretty awesome all right so that was my comic pick now i'm going to get into the toys because you yeah. know i was going to highlight the toys first and foremost look at this beefy ass beta ray bill figure yeah that he looks freaking amazing he is on page uh didn't see that in love and thunder 25 of the previews mm-hmm. he's underneath the diamond select toys oh it just makes me mad that the fact that beta ray bill didn't show up in love and thunder i am a little i'm, st- well, I'm still the, holding on to that dude <laughs> dude it's one of those things where like yo you had a chance to like make like and i understand like it's funny because they have all this like cgi negativity of like they're trying to like pump these movies out and it's like come on man like you can give it a little thought and kind of work on it like as he could have been in the back. He could have just been in the back, like dude. I'm. I. Like that's all I want. Here's the thing. Like his his whole character and development story. Like I mean, it's amazing. It is beefy. It's Beta Ray Bill. I love it because this reminds me of um. What's his name? Um. What's the dude's name? That did um the something. Beta Ray Bill. Walt Simonson. Not Walt Simonson. I'm talking about the guy that just he he. Daniel Warren the, Johnson. Yeah. Daniel Warren Johnson. Still, Daniel Warren Johnson. That looks like a Daniel Warren Johnson Beta Ray Bill. Like that's the dude I'm asking to help me move my couch. <laughs> You know, this is one that you asked to move that really heavy, um, like dresser set that you got. <laughs> now nah, this this is a beefy figure, bro. Yeah. And now, granted, like you also, this is the Marvel Select page. And if I'm being real, I think I, I've Marvel Select hasn't always been on my radar. Nope. Like once I got into Marvel Legends, it was like, not, we're not smart to buy Marvel Select. So like, yo, listen, right. listen to the listeners. They are beautiful looking figures. They're gorgeous. They're more for display. Well, they, yeah, they're it's more not for like display. I play. It's yeah, not like I play. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, listen, if you have any, if you want to do stop motion, any of that uh, robot chicken shit, this is not the figure for you. No. But honestly, yeah, they all look good, but I just know them for a fact. Like, this is not something that you give to your, like, niece or nephew. If your nephew is like, oh, I love Beta Ray Bill. No, nah, don't give him this. He's going to break. But I like that. I don't know. It's 
the Marvel Select are I do like that they've kind of cornered they've got their own thing, right? Like oversized figures. Mm-hmm. I think they still got like the details down and they tend to do like really good comic book accurate. I'm about to say like they could tend to do some damage because if you've ever seen the Hulk <laughs> or the Juggernaut ones, like yo, yeah, them things the, is heavy. heavy. Yeah. That's a bottom of the barrel type of thing. That guy holds up a foundation. But yeah, he's got his Jason uh, Gordon would use this figure to basically bro, bash. Yeah, he would anybody. fuck someone up. Like he's got like some agents after him. Mm-hmm. He would use this figure like Throat punch. <laughs> yeah, straight up. That Colossus that's pictured right next to him, that's, actual, that's actual 10 pounds of, of weight holding up. That, oh, for sure. Yeah, you could actually uh, uh, curl this one right here. <laughs> but yeah, this Beta Ray, Marvel's like Beta Ray Bill figure is awesome. You got the Stormbreaker. You got two different Stormbreakers. You got, you got a regular twirling. one and the twirly the one. The twirly one. I feel like with a Thor figure, you got to have the twirly <laughs> one. The twirly <laughs> hammer, you know? Which is such a uh, Gives it some motion. Look it looks like it. some motion. So, and this Beta Ray uh, Bill figure has got a rad... Uh, mohawk mohawk it's like a a headpiece that he's got so that was my toy select and then this is my second one right here which brings me i think to the end of my no i got one. Oh, i saw those yeah i know exactly which one the one in the All dress right, right? yeah <laughs> the cloud so, in the dress i love getting to the manga anime toy part in Tip previews right it is like some now. of my favorite because I love seeing like these. Look these. what Japanese. Look what look, look what Japan's doing over there. Look at oh, all yeah, the cool exactly. shit they're making. Look at all the cool shit that we're just now getting. You best believe I hit up Ellis when I saw these Final Fantasy toys, and I was like, "Before you leave fucking Japan, I swear to God, if I don't have a Final Fantasy figure from you, I gotta hit him up for all the One Piece. You better merch. get it now because he's he's leaving Japan soon. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, my uh, as Drew has um, as mentioned. You saw these two. In the previews, there is a Square Enix section, and they are promoting some Final Fantasy VII toys, one of them being a Final Fantasy VII remake cloud figure in, uh, in, in a dress. I think this is from the level where he had to go in disguise on the uh, train, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, I remember this being a part of it. Like, he had to go in disguise, so he was in a dress, and you had to find... I think it's when you were looking for Tifa, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Any Final Fantasy VII experts, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But that is... As much as that did catch my eye, that I was like, man... Hey, listen, if you love Cloud, and I know a lot of y'all say y'all do, yeah. this is the figure that proves yeah, you how much that you love Cloud. Yeah, show me, all right? If you ain't a true fan until you have all the Cloud products. If you can't love me in a dress, then you can't love me at my best. Mm-hmm. How are you gonna love me at my best, Dang. right? Dang... But my real figure that that caught my eye is this one right Near here. Near Automatica, right. the all black with the sword. Oh, God damn it. The one up top. Oh. This Cloud Strife figure. Um, oh, that the same is, figure you have like 10 versions of. I don't. Bro, I do not have a, a Final Fantasy Cloud figure. Yes, you do. No, I mean a mini one. Oh, okay, yeah. Because you need that life-size one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. I That's think, right. Let's be real. When it comes to previews, I think you could always ask... Do you really need it? And of course, the answer is like, not really. I'm just giving you but shit because, for, like, here's the thing. You this got, is fantasy. Bro, this is, is the, fantasy. It is final fantasy. This yes, very final fantasy. Listen, we're already talking about the sex box. We're talking about <laughs> fantasy already. What's your fantasy? <laughs> Ludicrous this shit. Yeah. But back to this figure. This one is, it doesn't show you, like, what the height is. Oh, mm-hmm. no, no, it does. It does. It says figure size, seven inch figure. What's well, a thick boy? And it, Seven inches. <laughs> Go ahead. Are we, still, are we in the sex box? No, 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 no. Oh, we're talking about fantasies. But the reason I want it is because this is video game accurate and uh-huh. not, not video remake. Video game yet. accurate. Yeah, all right, man. Come on, man. Can I? Can I'm I, just repeating what you're saying. Can I believe? In a, yeah. Can I believe? Oh, believe. Can I, can I fantasize? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I am a sucker for cloud figures, especially when they give them the Buster Sword. This one is the <laughs> video game accurate what's the version. Buster Sword is it? Buster. <laughs> cool. Oh, man. I feel, now you make me feel dirty about that. No, it's okay. Listen, you like it. Look, Blonde, man, you blue can't eyes. tell me this is not a sweet figure. No, it is a sweet figure, dude. Any you, it, any cloud figure that comes out, cloud is like up there with like Deadpool and Spider Man. He's so iconic that any figure wow. he comes out is going to be dope. Do you remember when they did Final Fantasy Avid Children and they man, did the cloud on, figure man. with the motorcycle, and it came with like ten blades, and you're like, damn. I don't even know what I, I don't even think he's got I knows even, how to use ten blades. Yeah, I don't even know where I would put this, but I want it. But yeah, no. I here's the thing. To admit, yeah, the reason I'm talking shit is because I want it so much. Do you think that would hold me back? So this figure comes out oh, son of a bitch. It comes out November twenty twenty three. The thing that would hold me back is that I feel like the price tags on these are always way too much. This is a hundred and thirty dollar figure. Oh, I didn't even look at that. Never mind, put it back. <laughs> yeah. Put it back. 
minimize that, <laughs> please. I don't want it. I like cloud, but I don't like cloud that much. It's like, yo, play the game. Play the game. Just play the game. The game right now is $8. You can oh, play man. as cloud. Look, previews. <laughs> Shut Previous that shit will make down. you feel so poor. You're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, put that, uh, uh-uh, uh, put, put that back, put that back. Put You're like, back. I don't even own it though. You no, put it, back. Put, it back. The... put it back right now. Mm-mm. Burn that previews. Yeah. So that is my toy, and I guess I should mention the one I overlooked here, which is another comic book, and that is Killadel. There was a solicitation for Philadelphia number twenty five, a comic book that Walt has mentioned every year that we go down to record with him. Um, I believe the premise is something involving a secret uh, society of vampires that secretly run the United States, like presidents uh, that are vampires have been running it and blah, blah, blah. So number 25 is coming out, looks like uh, November 30th, so this year, right? And it is uh, being promoted as a perfect jumping on point for new readers. It is a sold out Eisner nominated horror series uh, that is continuing on. It is written by Rodney Barnes who has been the writer behind shows like Marvel's Runaways, uh, American Gods. He also wrote the, um, uh, I guess, involved the Wu-Tang um, show on uh, Hulu. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then you've got the artist Jason Sean Alexander, who is an artist from uh, Spawn um, fame. Well, that, so, guy, that guy, oof, he does some really good stuff. Yeah, so this bring, my, my point in bringing this one up is, I like I feel like previews lately, and big shout out to Troy Jeffrey Allen, who we've had on the show. He works directly for um uh with previews. He does their previews weekly show on YouTube. I actually I need to hit him up. I want to have him back on the show. But previews has I feel like it's it's changed. Like it's gotten better in the sense that instead of just showing you, hey, here's six hundred pages of stuff coming out for the comic book section, they've done I've noticed that they've done a job a good job of like showing you, hey, this is a good jumping on point. If you're a fan of X, Y, Z, then you'll like this. Um, X, here is go a- give it to him. <laughs> X, go give it to him. <laughs> yeah, so I, I like that they are showing you potential new readers. Hey, this is a good jumping on point. You should check the series out if you like this stuff. Um, here is uh, our favorite. Here's a little, you know, a little blurb about you know, the insight. So I do like that they've been trying to help new readers potentially navigate through a catalog. I think mm-hmm. that's pretty cool attention to detail. I bring up Philadelphia because I think me and you have told Walt for the last two, three years. Actually, you know what? To go back to my first thing, what do you know is good that you need to read before you die? <laughs> Philadelphia. I should have said Philadelphia. I like to retract everything I said and say Philadelphia. Discover is, is pretty sick, too. What you're going to do is, in the middle of the beginning, just cut it off. Cut off everything I just say and then just put Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Image, by the way, previews... Uh, previews... Early on, previews was the way that I was introduced to Image Comics because they do a really good job. They give they you do. the whole damn comic book in the previews. <laughs> they do. They it's actually the will first show you nineteen pages. Yeah, this, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that the Image section and and we remember a time where the Marvel stuff was in previews before like Marvels decided. That's Marvel, how old I am. Damn, that's a good gauge. That's a good. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. That's a good litmus test. I remember when Marvels was in the previous magazine. Damn, old timer. Ah. That's a veteran right there. But we remember when Marvel and DC were both in the previous. Like their comics were in there before oh, and they, they were separated. fighting. It was like Bro. it looked like they like like you're like damn. Like who yeah. has the bigger one? You, like you flip the page and then the DC solicitation was like corny shit aside from that other company, <laughs> Batman number one hundred. But Image, I feel like, has really. Like their space in previews now, now that Marvel isn't there or DC, I love flipping through their space because they give you so many of their titles. And to your point, you also get sometimes like preview images of the interior artwork. Uh, it's almost like images like, wait, we got all this real estate? All right, bet. And even like some of the other smaller publishers, like I, I Dark Vault, Horse, Vault, Dark Horse, Boom Studios has like a pretty good uh, section. Oh, I remember who it, Kaboom. I remember Kaboom was yeah. like coming up on there. You can see like all the covers for everything. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> dynamite. Like anytime dynamite digitalization, it was like, yo, these are all the covers coming. IDW. I do have one more uh, comment to. Uh, actually, I looked at my note and there was one topic we didn't touch, and it, this is perfect jumping on point because okay. we're talking about listen, like. Let's touch the next topic. Can you stop being so pervy? I'm not being pervy. All right, all right. You said touch, kind of weird, but sorry. Actually, this actually you being pervy is perfect for this next topic <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted oh, to God ask dang. you. I wanted to ask you. Oh please don't. Talking about. You know, these other publishers, right? Dynamite. I'm sorry. Damn it, I already I fucking shot my load. I'm just going <laughs> to jump to it. Dynamite section in previews, 
is way too horny. Oh, way bro, too thirsty. Let me see if I can pull it up. Dude, no. Like, I don't want to <laughs> see it and stuff. Bro, I was like, what is this? Like, what is this? Wait, I want, no, I want, I want our viewers. I want people Dynamite watching. Dynamite is just like, yo, listen, like, we can't, like, they're basically. Oh, oh God. Not. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it up. So no, our, it's so racy. Our, our, our viewers are lucky. I can't pull up. Yeah, this, listen this for our viewers. Like, you guys remember that Marvel, that uh, Frank Cho cover or whatever that like got him in trouble, where it was like, oh, he's kind of showing the the woman form in a very like, like, oh, you don't bend like that. What I'm getting at is, and I do remember that Dynamite has Red Sonia. They got uh, a Vampirella, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think Lady Death is with them, but but my point is. Those three in particular, Vampirella, Red Sonia, Lady, Lady Death. Death, those three, they will show you the solicitations, and then they'll show you every cover they've got. Every single one. And it's usually like 20 covers. You're like, damn, how many Vampirella series come out every month? Holy shit, Red Sonia has got another series, and she's got 20 accompanying covers. And how many of those covers are really sexy? Like every single one of them. All of them. There might be one PG one, but the rest is like cover C, you know? <laughs> it's like, like She's this. And the other is like, what is, what is this? The other one is just like, where do you put the camera? Let's put it here. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Look oh my it. God. I'm kind of tempted to just kind of go. Dude, it's so, cr- like, it's just cringe. And it's like, oh my God. I'm sorry. The man. only other sexual thing that they give you is Tarzan, written by Dan Jurgens. <laughs> yeah. It's just I don't know. It's just funny because how many covers you get, and then it feels like the 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 more letters you get in, like cover L and Q, they start blocking out. You know when they start blocking out certain parts of the cover, and it's like ask your retailer. Like, no, <laughs> I'm not getting that. A one in one thousand, just to show like some boobs. You're like <laughs> I, I I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Well, here's that. the thing, and like without. I wonder how much those go for. So I have no idea. But the fact that me and you have worked at the comic book shop where we've had to see, like, you, you know where those comic books are at. Like, I remember... The very like, bottom. The very bottom, bottom le- behind no, wait, the shelf. Bottom? Wait, wait. If, if I was... I'm, I'm going back to the shop. Okay. All right. Cool. Customer walks in. He's like, mine's on the bottom. You know, and sometimes those customers would come in. There's this on the bottom. They, they would just say, yeah, mine's on the bottom. And, and you, you knew like, when and they said like, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got them coming. Yeah, because then you would flip through because there was always a bag and board with, like... It was all blacked out, and you're like, <laughs> it's like, oh, what's behind? Oh shit! You're like, all right, cool, and you're like, Strike and then up. they're like, it's the whole stack, and you're like, what? The whole stack? Really? It has to be like fifty comics in there. Fifty of these. And those are always the customers I could never small talk. Never. My small talk was real bad of them because I'd be like, so this weather, huh? Versus another customer is like, oh, let me talk about what you're reading. <laughs> Terriot. I remember it was like Terriot. Terrot. 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 You're like this and you're like, huh, okay. And then you're like, oh. That's what I'm saying. Previews, uh, that's what I love about it, man. They will show you everything. And it and to your to our, our earlier point, sometimes you get in, you get introduced to the whole spectrum of like this nerdy world of comic books, toys, and memorabilia and all that. Yeah. It's just that, like I said, when I was living through the dynamite stuff, I was like, Man, this is really horny. These are really horny pages like going on. These covers are really horny. Um, don't ask me if I put in a pre-order. I might have hit up Ben like, man, I'm just out of curiosity. Can you get cover W of Vampirella versus Red Sonia? Oh, man, thank you for indulging me in this episode, Drew. I think of course. Um, uh, would you would you be down to do this uh, uh, every month? Yeah, flipping through the previews, talking about things that we can't, can't afford. afford yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we'll check. We'll change the previews. I'll do it like my. You know, what? I this is something that my dad does. My dad will be like, "Yo, get me the used car section." I'm like, "Why do you yeah. need this, Dad? You got a car, and your you car already is, have a car." And he's like, "I just want to see what they got." My dad will go through a car auto and just look through. It. You, you know what it is. You know what, the, and complain what, about what they're selling it for. You know what this. <laughs> You want four thousand for what? <laughs> that, How many miles? Nah, no, they added their money. Dad, are you gonna buy it? No. Then why are you getting your blood pressure up? You know what flipping through the previews is like? It's like um that saying where it's like, uh, what is it? I may be married, but I can still look at the menu. <laughs> That's <what> I, mean. <laughs> I used to get on my mom all the time because like like I mean we come from brown moms or maybe we just come from like an era of moms where like the QVC to them is something that is just ingrained. Like I come at my mom. Holy like, shit. Have we become our- No, we haven't. I have, but 
Wow, you're right. Like Sorry. the previous catalog is the QVC, QVC of comics. For, for comics, it's like I'm just looking. I'm yeah. just looking. Can you imagine if we try to apply for previews and we were trying to sell their comic books like infomercials? I could do it. Matter of fact, all the products. Matter of fact, all the products they give you. I, I feel, could definitely do it. I yeah, feel yeah. Like it'd be trouble. Would you? Like would you trouble. try to make your own character, or would you just be P. Milligan? No, I would. I would almost be. Uh, um, what is the name of the host for Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? And here we have a 1975 <laughs> Spider Man, rich and famous. <laughs> that would be my That'd thing. Be dope. Okay. All right, Drew. I appreciate you, man. Uh, let's go ahead and get to closing. Listeners, I hope uh, I hope you got a good laugh out of this, all right? Even if maybe you didn't learn a lot, <laughs> hopefully you got a good laugh. Let us know if this is something that you want to see uh, more episodes of. We can make this a, a we'll monthly Make a follow-up thing. episode to see if we actually ordered the shit that we were talking we should, about. Th- that should be the end of the year episode. It's going to be me like... every episode. Did you get it? Nah, nah. <laughs> I didn't, but... I feel like, you know... I feel like Ben would if we if we could work something out with Ben, uh, but at that point it'd be dangerous. I'm, I've actually I had just had a conversation with someone the other day about like trying to tame. Like I feel like I'm at a good point in my collecting uh, um, journey where I'm not buying just a bunch of stuff. So I want yeah. I want to continue that on. And I don't know if this this is kind of like going falling out of rehab. Like I, I just completed rehab. I have I've sustained a good. I have a good pull list that is reasonable. Mm-hmm. It isn't expensive. I'm not buying a bunch of stuff. And now I'm tempting myself. Okay, for the next, I'm telling you, the next one, next preview we're doing, I'm going to pick some of the most outlandish shit. Dude, we should. I, I thought, I, the fact I thought that, you were going to come a little more I crazy. Wa- here's the thing. I right. wanted to, but you had sent it, and I was like, oh, he's taking this seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me just pick things that I can afford. Like, he's right like let me just pick things that I know that I can afford, but they won't ask yeah. about it. All right. Next, next one that we do. Let's try to. I think we should continue to try to go outland. There, there's but a picnic it, basket. There's a Mickey Mouse picnic basket that I would have just been like, "Oh, this is just dope to have." That's funny. All right, but listeners, let us know if you want more episodes like this. Let us know what you thought about. Yeah, this and if one. you don't, who cares? Because like you know, I'm I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> still gonna record it. <laughs> and if you are curious about when uh, the rest of the crew will be back, we are recording a Rick Remender spotlight episode next month so that'll be the next episode so get your rick remender reading game up so read what is it uh read some Scumbag, deadly class. tokyo ghost Ooh. deadly class Keep on going. um we're gonna be uncanny avengers okay oh uh, what else did i was gonna remender do uh, uh, uh image uncanny only. x-force oh image only so that's uh scumbag i think he did redneck no donny cates did redneck um i think i think you gave plenty of good jumping mm-hmm. on points and those are probably the oh ones. no the best the best rick remender black science <laughs> Black Science. Would you really think that's his best? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like you could also make an argument for Deadly Class, though. Deadly you know Class is still going, so he has chances to fuck it up or just add whatever <laughs> he wants. So then, you know what I'm saying? Like, when something ends, you're like, all right, cool, we don't touch that. All right, but that is what we got coming to you next week. Thank you guys so much yeah, for the patience. Yeah, coming next to you next week. Dude, come on. What? I'm fun. not saying anything that you're not saying. I'm just looking in the camera, making gestures. <laughs> it's the way you're saying it. What? Anyways, listeners, as you can tell, it's time to wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys take care of yourselves and continue to make mine and your short box. Peace. Peace.